Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft LAN Party. I have not been on the server in a little bit. Um, flying sounds are still broken. Uh, hello, everybody. I am uh, back. Back from my trip and back on the server. I have been on the server since my trip. Um, oh, oh, dude's still in there. Um, and uh, yeah, I had a great little trip. It was a cruise. It was like a uh, 10 night Mediterranean cruise leaving from um, Rome and we went to Rome a few days early and uh, spent some time there and it was all pretty fantastic very uh, it's very cool um, yeah I, I I could spend a long time talking about it I'm gonna try and keep this short I don't have super plans here um, just going to wander a little bit. Of course, I start as the sun is starting to go down. That's okay. We will be fine. Um, Rome. I, with my food issues. Wait. There is a. With my my food issues. I was, uh, I was thinking that I would have a real hard time eating there. And I brought like a whole suitcase full of food, uh, specifically to be able to eat in Rome. And uh, because I figured it's the land of pasta and, uh, it just seemed like they would be, I would have a hard time there, but it turned out not to be the case. Um, I got those horses I'm hearing. Is that like a zombie horse? Hmm. Okay, enough distraction. Um, so Rome, it turns out, is uh, super. Uh, I don't know, super um, gluten-free friendly, celiac friendly. And uh, I, I'm not quite sure why. I was told that Italy has a unusually high, you know, incidence of celiac, which is surprising, but you know, uh, and that they get pretty serious about food allergies in their restaurants. And so all the menus have little symbols that describe hi uh, that uh, that describe what allergens are present in each dish and uh, at least the restaurants I went to which were researched ahead of time so it's not necessarily a fair selection or a, you know fair sampling but um, they all did really well with accommodating me and I ate super well um, and it turns out that a lot of the restaurants in Rome have either are like they know what they're doing uh, in terms of making gluten free food or where's the nearest portal Vex's base of course but I'm gonna go over the cove um, <clears throat> Either they either know what they're doing in terms of making gluten-free variations on food or a lot of the restaurants turns out they have whole like second kitchens that are gluten-free so they'll have two kitchens one of them is entirely dedicated gluten-free which was surprising but really made me very happy and I had some of the best uh, some of the best meals I've ever had in Rome. Um, not surprisingly, I, I mean, in some ways, it's Rome, Italy, 
the uh, it's all Italian food but I had I had some fantastic pizza now ah, how'd you get there um, I had some fantastic pizza and uh, I went found a place near the Vatican where they had fresh like fresh made gluten-free pasta which was fantastic and probably unseats my um, my number one favorite restaurant which is a place in Vancouver called Ask for Luigi it's now this place near the Vatican which in my brain is the place near the Vatican um, I'm not 100% certain on what its actual name is uh, I have to look it up maybe I'll put it in the notes but they're super gluten-free friendly and uh, they were very nice and seemed like a lot of people in Rome speak English so it was uh, it was pretty easy to deal with things so so uh, so that was fantastic then we got on the boat and we were on a it was a celebrity cruise cruise ship on the celebrity edge and um, fantastic ship it was like their newest ship and until they launch their the another ship that's in the same class the same basic design that they will be launching um, oh, it's on big been around um, that uh, next year um, and I called the apex so <clears throat> Yeah, the ship was great and the food was really good and they were pretty well able to deal with my situation. They were a little less, I don't know, um, actively catering to me than I was kind of hoping and that I kind of found on, uh, what was, um, Royal Caribbean cruise lines, but you know, uh, it was pretty darn good and I I managed to uh, I managed to get through pretty much the entire trip without eating anything I shouldn't have uh, there was one one instance somewhere and I have my suspicion of what it was um, there was a little mix up in one of the restaurants on the ship I think but I don't know for sure um, so that was really the only problem I had I ate super well and for the most part was feeling super well, which is pretty great. Um, so yeah, okay. This tunnel is new. And this is the only thing I've done since I've been back. Um, this portal is new and it goes to a place that we've seen, but I didn't really explore. So let's go check it out. Well, this is a little different since I've seen it. Oh, wow. Oh. Entrance. Oh, shoot. <laughs> okay, there's a skeleton up there. I don't feel the need to take him on. He didn't really hurt me. That just startled me a bit. Okay, walk through here. Blop. This is built on evens, which is... Feels a little weird. But hey! Okay, so this area here, this is the aquarium. And we kind of saw it before. Um, I'm going to, like... Dilly-dally a little bit. Um, oh, is there... There's no air in here. Interesting. Okay, let's uh, get back down here. Uh, yeah, so this this thing is just filled with fish that were all like hand caught and placed. Yeah, they like swimming towards the top, don't they? Interesting. Okay. Oh, look at this. This is pretty. Oh, there's there's a hole in the top up here. You can get some air. Okay, 
This is pretty cool. I didn't really see all the fish in here before. Oh, and there's a the entrance to the side there. Let's go back down to the bottom and go out the side here. Okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, and then the sides are little queen angelfish, anglerfish, and the little exhibits of different types of fish. So it's like a true aquarium. We visited an aquarium when we were on the cruise, and it was uh, the um, Oceanographique, Musée Oceanographique, something like that, in Monte Carlo, which was supposed to be one of the stops we made, but they there was like a, a yacht show. Red lip to Benny. I don't see the red lip Benny. Oh, there they are. Oh, wow, they're pretty. Um, yeah, so we went and Chihuahua Power G wanted to show me that museum in particular um, because the yacht show, they wouldn't let the boat like dock super close and they would have had to tender us from quite a ways away. Uh, so they put in in Villa Franche, which is right next door. I mean, it's the next city over. Uh, we put in there. It was a tender trip to the port. Um, anemone. Really? Hmm. Um, and then we went and we found a cabbie to take us, a taxi to take us over to Monte Carlo. We went to the Oceanographic. We saw it. It was pretty fantastic. It's an older building. The cool thing about it is it's like all the design is like aquatic based. So it's all designed after like um, uh, the, the walls have like waves on them. And um, oh, oh, look at this. There's a flopper, a green flopper. Wow. Somebody's been in a doing a lot of scavenging over in the new areas. Clownfish. Yeah, so the building is, and it's got um, designs with like octopi or octopuses um, and <clears throat> and um, squids and whales and things like that. In the design of the building, which is from the early 1900s. It's pretty cool. Um, and I, I took a bunch of pictures when I was there. I haven't posted anything yet. Huh. A little flash there of like some lava fall or something. I wonder if that's in the nether that I was seeing before it rendered all this stuff around or what? Interesting. Okay. So anyway, that's new. Um, and then um, we had a bit of an adventure getting back to the port uh, because it was things were super congested because of the yacht show and when we were trying to get back school had just let out so the, we ended up having to take a bus to the uh, to the train station which is right on the border of France and uh, Monaco and then we took the train back to Villafranche and we had trouble getting off the train uh, because they were a little aggressive with their door closing um, which was uh, so that was a little hairy we almost we almost missed uh, the getting off the train uh, but we made it back and it was fine uh, so yeah that was good don't know what time it is. We'll see. Oh, <laughs> we have a little gold farm going on right here. Um, hmm. Wow. That, this could be super dangerous. I don't really have blocks to like protect myself here. This might be a little dangerous. Oh. 
Do I get them all? It's not like I only injured one of them. Oh. Oh, is that a baby? Okay. There we go. We're all good. Okay. Wait, and then another one spawned? Okay. So we, we, um, didn't do a lot of official, uh, uh shore excursions. Um, we had planned on doing one to Pompeii. And then that got canceled because not enough people signed up for it. It was a special sort of uh, more accessible version. Uh, so I ended up going to Herculaneum on my own. So like Pompeii, Herculaneum is a, is a city that was destroyed and buried by uh, Mount Vesuvius. Uh, it was fascinating to see it. They've like partially excavated it out a bunch of pictures there too um, so that was really cool and the, the main difference between Herculaneum and Pompeii from what I understand uh, the way they described it was that the uh, Herculaneum was more of a rich rich town uh, than Pompeii was um, so Pompeii was bigger but there were a lot of shops and people merchants and people selling things in Herculaneum um, and including a wine shop where like the menu was still like painted on the wall, which is kind of cool. Um, but what we did instead was in most of the ports where we got off the boat and we didn't get off the boat on all of them. Um, we, we kind of made up our own sort of shore excursions. And so for instance, in, in Mallorca. We, we were set out looking for some um, Mallorca pearls, which are kind of a thing for Chihuahua Power G's family. They are actually sort of sort of artificial or sort of manufactured pearls. They look really pretty, um, and they can come in a whole variety of colors. Oops. And, um, and they're kind of a thing on the island there. The company that figured out how to make them in the first place was, is headquartered on Mallorca. And they call themselves Mallorca Pearls, but they spell it a little differently the, than from what most of the rest of the people in the area do. Uh, and it's, and there's, they've got a bunch of competitors since their patent expired a long time ago. So they run these ads sort of saying, you know, accept no imitations, but really what they're saying is accept no imitation, imitation pearls. But, uh, so we, we kind of, and there's a huge cathedral in Palma. Um, so we went, I went and took a bunch of pictures of the cathedral and, uh, we went and found a store that sold the pearls and we got some as gifts for friends and family and yeah, so that was, uh, that was pretty cool. It was, I want this egg. Ah. <clears throat> um, so yeah, so that was, that was kind of cool. And the crazy thing about that was we, we, we got into a taxi right, uh, when we got off the boat at the port and he took us in town and we told them that we were looking for these pearls and he was like oh I can bring you to the factory and we're like oh really that's kind of exciting oh I need uh, I need some more hoppers I need half stack of hoppers here okay so we, yeah we uh we we went he took us to this uh, pearl factory not the one not the same pearl company that we were looking for but that's okay it was still fascinating to see them be made and they had a little gift shop so we managed to get 
Uh, we bought some gifts there, not um, not these sort of uh, the ones for the people who are expecting or that we wanted to get the Mallorca pearls, but that's okay. Um, and so we, we got some pearls and we got get more wood in here it's like I don't want to touch any of that I want a half a stack oh you know what that will work <clears throat> um, so yeah and then we we went and got a went out to go get a cab to get back to the to the port and it's the same driver. We got the same driver a second time uh, to take us back to the to the port. And there's like 1,200 cabs on the island, so it's just really quite a coincidence that we got the same guy twice. Um, but you know, I think that was pretty cool. And uh, he thought it was funny too, and was trying to explain to us just how unusual. You know what the, what the, how long the odds were of us getting him twice um so anyway 